Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello this Wednesday. Hey, Vicky, good morning to you. Karen, good morning. Great to see you. John, hello, hello. Hope you're doing well. Hi, everybody. Glad you're here. Part of this journey. I know we're running late today. It happens. Yeah, it happens. 100 miles an hour and the hair on fire. So, good times. Uh, so glad to be here, though. This is a moment of joy and respite. Spend a little time with you. So, thank you for... Thanks for coming along. Good morning, Yvette. Red is my color. Oh, really? All right. It's kind of my favorite color, so I, I like red. Um... That's cool. I've been told blue is my color too, so I don't know what my color is really. But yeah, I like the red. So um, doesn't I don't look too much like a tomato. So all right. Anyway, it's gonna be weird today, friends. It's all right. That's all I can say because I'm just in a weird place. That's it happens. All right, let's get going. It is this the fifth day of October, and we are here at uh, a little bit after 11 11 and i'm glad that you're with us and i'm glad that you're a part of uh, this journey um it is a joy to to if i get the chance to say your names uh to be a part of this uh one person i want to lift up is doris doris has been uh um is laid up right now and um she is always regularly here she's always checking this out but she is uh not always she, she doesn't make comments and stuff but she's always lurking in the background and so it's a joy uh so i would i want to invite you just to pray for doris and to lift her up these days um in uh in um so that she might heal well and be whole she is just one of the most tremendous people i've ever met and both in in her lay ministry of visitation and in her faith and her uh and her walk in the world she's just terrific so uh please um give her your prayers today so this morning i want to talk about uh the our invitation to disagree so um you know i don't know if you've noticed but we tend to be uh, in a kind of a disagreeable culture right now. Maybe this is new. I don't know. Maybe you're just noticing. But the ability for civil discourse, the ability for us to talk to, together with disagreements. Uh, you know, I just came from a meeting where we just, you know, there's all kinds of people seeing things different ways. And uh, we see things different ways. And the the question is, is not if we disagree, but can we disagree? Can we disagree well? And can we can we actually offer each other uh, some some grace and some peace and all? But also at the same time, hold our own positions and hold our own abilities to uh, to hold things uh, in tension. And so I, that so I you know I want us to to just to go back to scripture and look at. Um, how we kind of understand this because there's you know i mean there's plenty of disagreements in bible plenty of them some of them people put a sword in somebody else's head some of them uh bring people to uh be to betrayal um in the case of judas some people bring uh some of them bring them to crucifixion in the life of jesus that the 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 powers that be disagreed with what he was doing and saying and uh instead of having a cup of tea and talking about it uh they shipped him off to the romans that that actually how we disagree is incredibly important 
It's really different than putting an ax in somebody because they disagree with you or shunning them so that they might, uh, that, that they might not, uh, uh, not be able to participate in public life at all or even crucifying them. Hmm. Disagreeing is probably one of the most important things we do. And it's one of the most important things we do that we can, you know, you can say, well, loving people, that's more important, or being nice to people, that's more important. And and I actually would contend that you can't actually love people and you can't actually disagree with them unless you, or you can't actually love them unless you can permit disagreement. Because the key of disagreement is trust. I'm going to say that again. The key of disagreement is trust. Like, if you, you, you know, you, you, if you're, if you're ever in an abusive relationship, you know, whether it's, you know, you know, and this, I hope that's never happened to you. I pray that's the truth. But if it's ever, but if you've ever seen anybody, if you've ever known anybody, if, or if, God forbid you yourself have ever been in that, there is this way in which, um, that, that, uh, that it's, that there's, there's no ability to disagree with somebody who's, go, who's going to beat you up you know, who's going to be mean to you if you, uh, if you disagree with them, because there's no trust that they're going to be able to hold your disagreement in a respectful way. Right? Like, like, because, you know, if you're going to get, if you're going to get berated for a disagreement, well, you just rather not disagree because they're not a trustworthy partner. Now I, I, I pray none of you have ever been through that, but I would suggest we probably all have at some point or another. We've all encountered people in our life that that when we disagree with them, all we get back is vitriol, and and that doesn't have to be an intimate relationship to have a, have that experience. That and that and and what that demonstrates is there there you can't trust them to hold your disagreement because they're just gonna kind of kind of vomit all over you they're just gonna they're they're just gonna have a reaction that is not beyond that and so that the foundation of disagreement is actually trust and so the first thing to do is is that what is in in disagreement is understanding we can trust one another and and kind of naming that and i think that's one of the things that this passage i'm going to look at today actually is genius about about the way it invites us to consider disagreement um, and this is from Matthew uh, 15 to 17. You know, this is one of the fun things about Bible is sometimes it's just, you know, cosmic and, you know, t points us towards the stars. But sometimes it has this, this gritty wisdom about just how to do a thing that is hard to do. Uh, how to, and how to contend with a thing that we all have to contend with, but but it's just it just seems like it's full of fangs and and uh, and uh, claws. So uh, so this is from Matthew 18, 15 to 17. If your brother sins, go and show his fault in private. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. But if he does not listen to you, take one or two more with you so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, Every fact may be confirmed. And if he refuses to listen to them, go tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, tell him to be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Friends, this is a way of building trust with people that you disagree with. This, if you see it, I mean, I talked about all that. This is a way of building that trust. Now, some people are going to are gonna demonstrate themselves as unreliable at any speed, you know, kind of like the old, the, you know, Ralph Nader said of the old Corvair, you know, unsafe at any speed. Well, some people are unreliable at any speed. And that, and, and, and that's all right. And that there is a legitimate way to say you can, you should treat them as a Gentile and tax collector. These are the words of Jesus. These aren't, this is no Bible. This, this, these are the words of Jesus himself. That these are, that this notion of saying, you know what, treat them as somebody, a Gentile or tax collector. What does that mean? Gentile, somebody you're not going to have dinner with, essentially. That's basically what that means. Is in its broadest sense, it's like you are that 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 you don't that you don't have to break bread with those people. You don't have to be in with them in that. The second is the tax collector, which is like. There's somebody who's going to beat you up. Like the tax collector would go around with Roman muscle and and extract from you a certain amount of money. That was what that was what the tax collectors were doing. 
and and to put and and so to say that that there legitimately are ways in which we need to hold boundaries to protect ourselves. But only, but only, we are quick in this world and quick in this society to leap to that end part, to leap to that place to say, oh, well, you know, I, I think they don't agree and so they're sinning and so, you know, Gentile, don't have, don't have dinner with that guy. Like, ah, I hate that guy. And particularly in our media culture, where we're just getting all these kind of talking heads coming at us all kinds of ways and all kinds of people like, like we, oh, I don't agree with that guy. He's horrible. And we end up, where do we end up? Echo chambers, right? We end up hearing the same voices that we all agree with all the time. And we end up like, yeah, that's bad, right? Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Oh, yeah, we, oh, we all agree that's bad. Like in a, we end up in a giant echo chamber. Friends, we have the healing of the world rests on us disagreeing well, or at least the invitation to work through our disagreements. At least the invitation to work through our disagreements. It's not always going to work out, and it always doesn't have to work out. And I would actually say that the efforting, the, the, the desire to simply enter into the conversation before we get to the Gentile and tax collector status of somebody we don't like, before we get to that, is actually that's the part that the angels are going to come in and work with. That's the part that the Holy Spirit is going to show up and do something miraculous with. That's the part that, that all the right things will line up, that it's when we engage in that process, we don't just engage in it alone, but we engage in it with all the hosts of heaven and that, that things begin to move. And, and is it always going to work out? No. But the but that the way in which we disagree, the invitation to disagree. So let's let's break this apart for uh, for just a second um, uh, this morning because it's it's worth the sense. And and really, I, I invite you to spend. There's there's so much wisdom in these two verses, in these three verses. So much wisdom. If your brother sins, go and show him his fault in private. So first. When we look at the disagreement, you've got to say that that like we're understanding somebody that is violating something sacred. That's what we're that's what's going on inside of us when we look at somebody that's disagreeing with us, whether we admit it or not. Like, oh, I might see it a different way. I may, da, 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 you know, like like we can dress it up and we've gotten really good at this in modernity. Like, oh, well, you know, they different cultural backgrounds or different, you know, we you know different, um, you know, socioeconomic background. Like you, we have different ways that we talk about these things, but the, what we have to be honest with about is that in, in our heart of hearts, when we end up disagreeing, we, we had a hard stop with somebody and we have to own, this is our part to begin with. We're encountering a sinner. We're encountering somebody that is violating something sacred that we call sacred. That's a disagreement. So, and we have to own that in ourselves because, because if we don't, what we do is what the, what the world is doing a lot of these days is this, you know, we have to, you know, like we have to be tolerant of all the things and we have to be tolerant of all the stuff and we have to, and, and what that's doing is it's, is it's watering down and it's ameliorating the idea that inside of us, it's something we think has been violated. Now that doesn't give us the right, nor the nor is it a good idea to go hit somebody in an axe with an axe because of that. But if we don't understand, if we don't own our own vitriol over a disagreement that we have with somebody, if we don't own that, then we let that vitriol, we let that little that that little uh, little piece of anger go around and start like a little imp, start making trouble all over the place. Right? You've seen this in relationship. I mean. You can talk about it being passive aggressive. You can talk about it being aggressive aggressive. You can talk about just being passive. You, well, I mean, there's all kinds of way these little imps work themselves out. But it, but the first part of a disagreement is before we ever get into a conversation with anybody we disagree with is to own the fact that we think something we love and vi has been violated, and to be able to hold that, to be able to say, okay, you know, maybe they have, maybe they they haven't, and start and not and not have our first instinct to reach for the pistol, you know, but, but to really say, okay, you know, they, they're in a place, they're, they're thinking in a way, they're acting in a way, they're behaving in a way, uh, they're, uh, they're uh, um, advocating in a way that is other than what I think is sacred. 
And so when we enter into the conversation of his agreement, we enter into the, the conversation of what is sacred. And so to first hold that in ourselves. Second is to show him his fault in private. Gosh, we love to just blaze things out onto the interwebs or to blaze things out you know, out into out, out into the ether or to to accuse people in a, in the company of others or to uh, but to simply have a conversation with somebody without them having to be on to have their social status or their social uh, standing challenged. Friends, every one of us, I don't care how enlightened you are. I don't care if you're the Dalai freaking Lama. Like you, you get, you put somebody in a public arena and you start hurling, hurling accusations at them. You, they will get their back up. And even if they don't, they will ignore what you have to say. The ability for us to hold the fact that we're talking about something sacred and then enter into a private conversation about it is probably first the is is first the the one of the first and foremost things and if he listens to you you have won your brother and what does that mean does that mean like oh he's repented it doesn't say repented does it doesn't mean it doesn't say he's turned from his, if he turns from his ways it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't you know all those kind of good biblical imaginations that we have if he listens to you if he hears the fact, if he genuinely hears the sacredness of what you're offering him and genuinely offers the sacredness back, there, there's a way in which you're both, you can both stand in the sacredness of what you disagree over. There's power in it. It doesn't mean you don't have to see the world completely the same way. It means that you have to stay in covenant and in connection, that that actually is way more critical to this world and this life than actually all being on the same sheet of music. But if he doesn't listen to you, take one or two more with you, and so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every fact may be confirmed. Now, this I, this can feel like an ambush, you know, to somebody who's who's being who's being, but um, you know, but that but you know the, the and it really does have that kind of intervention quality, the sense of like. But to have, like, if there's a real disagreement about something, to have other other people that to bring it into a, a wider conversation of folks that you can you can agree with, you know, and 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 not and not get into a point where we're where we're uh, you know kind of organizing a stoning, but to where we can simply say and where we can where they can simply bear witness to the conversation as it is. Because often what will happen if you bring people in to bear witness to what's being talked about, someone will see the larger conversation that's happening. Someone will be able to see the sacredness of both people. And that in that, um, the, in, and in that healing may, may be able to come together. There's a way that we may be able to come. If he refuses to listen then, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen to even to the church, let him be as you as a gentle and a tax collector. So the, you know, the, the, now we get into like, you know, this is the way that this notion of of um, of uh, of listening to of the of the wider body and the wider connection of the wider world and, the, and into and, and into the and into the public arena, you know, that, um, you know, and we have to consider this, like if it gets to that point, if we get to the, the wideness of the public arena. Um, but there's a, there's a, there's a power in that, right? That there's a power, there's a bigness in that. So the first, so, so really, but, but, but how often is our temptation to start with that? How often is our temptation to start with that? You know, there's a great, there's a great, so within the congregational way, church discipline used to be a big thing. I'm sure you probably know that, that if you, if you know it, anything about it at all, like, and there's a great story from like, I think it's like 1906 um, at a place called Kenduskeg Union Church, which is this little church up in northern Maine. And that um, and that that somebody saw one of the members of the church on Sunday morning hauling wood in the middle of of uh, winter. Now, the, the disciplines of the church were no work on Sabbath. That was that that used to be the disciplines of the church by 
uh, that afternoon, the deacons had met. By that evening, the, the, the deacons went to the church and relieved him of his covenantal obligation that he was no longer welcome at the church, Mr. Jones or whatever his name was. That that pro that that literally, you know, and and not to not to say nothing about the past, and not to say nothing about how all that, you know, not to say nothing like my double negatives, but not to not to get dig deeply into that, but can you see how that there was just a huge violation there, of what God instructs us in terms of how we understand our engagement with other people. Now I'm not saying we should go back to those disciplines, we should go back to all that stuff. Probably be better for it, but I'm not advocating it, and I don't, you know, and, and the world isn't that way. But what I'm saying is that that even the church, even even we who suppose this is how we do business, have been pretty crappy at this over the years. We've been pretty poor at it, but not as bad as the rest of the world. You know, the rest of the world likes to hit each other in axes and throw bombs at each other and blow them up and take their stuff. Like that's a you know, there's those are that's a that's a, a much wider that's a much more vicious response. Um, uh, uh, you know, I I would suggest. So we all have trouble with disagreement. We all have trouble with disagreement. But I, I want to invite you to this, uh, to this discipline, this way of conversation, this way of en enjoying it um, and, and entering into it. Because to me, we're in such a contentious culture. And it breaks my heart all the time. And people I genuinely love that see things different than I do. And that's, and I'm not, and I'm not willing to cut them off and not willing to, but if we were to really enter into the conversation, there might even be questions about whether or not they, you know, they, that we would, we, we could, you know, we could still cohabitate because, because of the froth in the water, because of the, the blood in the water, because of the way that, that, uh, you know, we're all a little bit in a feeding frenzy about our own rightness around things. And I want to just, and today I just want to invite you back to the words of Jesus. I want to invite you back to this teaching that I think has more, so much wisdom in it because it first, it first calls us to a, account and be aware of the sacredness that we are looking at in the world and then bring that to someone in a, in a very personal and private way. And invite them to be our brother or sister again. I bet there's one person in your life right now that you could probably do that with. Probably one person in this life that you just have been, you've been disagreeable, they've been disagreeable, you're disagreeable together. That you could just sit down, have a cup of coffee and say, this is where I, this is how I see it. This is, this is what I call sacred. This is what I call important. And this is what I feel like you're stepping all over and that you're, and that, and that, um, you're not only getting me, you know, it violating what I think is important, but you're hurting yourself and the world at large. And that, the, that stuff I call, we call sacred. I invite you to enter into those conversations, man, they're scary, man, they're awful. But to just one, just one. Enter in and heal the world. Be a part of this, of the of of the knitting back together of the goodness of the of being, rather than the constant, you know, nattering nabobs of negativism. There's a there's a little historical uh, aphorism for you. And the, this continuing kind of unleashing of the little imps of anger out into the world. We can do it, friends. And there's treasure in it. There's the gaining of a friend, which is the gaining of a whole world. There's a the gaining of a brother or a sister, which is the gaining of the universe. I hope you'll step into it. I hope you'll, you'll lean into it. So that's my little homework for you. So, friends, we are taking a break. I am on vacation for the next week. We will be back next Thursday, not th not tomorrow Thursday, but Thursday next. Uh, we'll be back with 1111. Um, I am going to keep you all in my prayers. I'm going to keep you all uh, with me as as uh, I go about my travels and uh, the opportunity to be uh, with each of you um, that, that coming next week. 
but I want to, uh, to, I, I, I'm going to be able to take a knee and spend a little time with some friends and, uh, charge my batteries back up so that we can, uh, uh, we can continue to meet in this grand fashion. Uh, it is my hope that uh, this week is filled with joy. It is filled with reconciliation. It is filled maybe even with disagreements so that you might have the chance to uh, gain back the brothers and sisters in your life. All right, friends, a, a special peace and grace to you all in these days ahead so that you may know God's love for you. And we'll pick it up next week, next Thursday, with another 1111. Peace and grace, my friends.